and you know what is trunk trunk is uh, when we have to connect uh, these two switches okay so this is the trunk we also can call it the uplink port and let's say we have multiple VLAN domains here. This is VLAN 10, VLAN 30, uh, we have VLAN 40 here. And let's say we have VLAN 10 here as well. And VLAN 30 and sorry, my mouse is. So how these things or these hosts are going to communicate with this uh, uh, segment because we have the segregation kind of okay so that is the, the thing we uh, create the trunk links between these two switches and trunk is nothing is having the capability of uh, uh, passing these all VLANs through this cable so that's it just paint this is the concept behind the trunk. So as you can see, VLANs may need to span multiple different physical switches, as I mentioned here. It carries multiple VLAN information along with a native VLAN. So it means it is it is not going to prop propagate or send these information. It will also send the information about the VLAN one. I mean VLAN one information cannot can also be sent through this link and the native VLAN as well. Okay, so the other thing is native VLAN will be untagged and used for some special purpose. I, I have already mentioned what was the purpose is. Two main protocols are being used by the under trunk. These are what 802.1Q and the ISL. ISL is Cisco proprietary, mean Cisco own ISL nobody else can use it 802.1q is the standard and what does it mean standard and uh, uh, proprietary let's suppose we have switch cisco switch which is connected with the cisco switch if you want to create the trunk you will use what you can use isl or either you can use dot one q because this is a standard open standard basically but since these two devices belong to the cisco you can use happily these isl but what in case in production environment you often get different kind of switches like juniper this is a juniper switch or let's say huawei whatever it might be then what your isl is not gonna work here so the dot one q is going to help here because it's an open standard cisco understand dot one q juniper understand dot one q and whatever the vlans or whatever the information you want to propagate uh, it will be passed through this uh, run happily so this is the difference between isl and dot one q then uh, they they use kind of you know uh, uh, protocol to send the information which is known as uh, dtp dynamic trunking protocol so behind the trunk we use kind of you know uh, the pulses we can say or the heartbeats these are the dtps which is going to basically create trunk links if we have the switch here and we have a switch here and uh, we just uh, connect uh, these cables using uh, what crossover cable how this switch is gonna know that uh, other switch want to become a trunk with me so this is where dynamic trunking protocol comes in handy it will send kind of probes to this switch telling him that i am interested to become a trunk with you 
and if this switch is also interested to become a trunk it would also send the uh, probe and the reply or can say and now they will both end up as a trunk link but if there is a mismatch in dtp okay uh, we have two switches and they want to negotiate as a trunk but let's say this switch is willing to become a trunk but this not then what will happen it will not create this trunk link so the protocol that is used uh, you know to to determine what is on the other end it is a dtp so it is mentioned a dynamic trunk protocol will be used to establish trunks and not to worry this uh, we will go a lot in detail we will just memorize these things uh so this is just uh, the diagram as you can see we have multiple switches here okay then these are the access links or the host machines and they want to communicate with each other so this is the thing trunk links we will create trunk links between these switches so this is how we see uh, admin 1 if you want to communicate with admin 2 the information will go through this and it will hit here if only if, if there is a trunk link is configured if it is not trunk no communication will pass through and this is uh, uh, just like the frame of ethernet ethernet frame basically uh, because we are talking about layer 2 you will not see any kind of ipv4 here we are discussing about layer 2 structure so it has destination mac source mac ethernet frame and this frame check sequence if there is any kind of error it will uh, it will uh, get uh, uh, you know from the help of fcs it will know that there is some kind of error and this 802.1q which is dot 1q trunking it is gonna uh, add into this tag as you can see it's a four bit tag four byte tag and we have this VLAN information. It just, uh, uh, what I can say, it, it's just uh, uh, added this uh, information into this frame. And when we'll hit the, uh, this uh, wire shark, I will show you, uh, I will demonstrate how this package, uh, the frame look like. So basically this is a frame, ethernet frame of layer two and we are going to add dot one q information inside the frame so this is how it will look like so it will add this vlan information somewhere in between uh, mac and ethernet frame 